Welcome. In 1834, a German mathematician by the name of de Richelieu, which sounds very French, um, outlined a very simple principle. He called it the Schubfach principle, the draw principle. And the idea is, is, is the following. Suppose I have a whole bunch of boxes and a whole bunch of objects, and I want to put these objects in those boxes. Well, if it turns out there are more objects than there are boxes, no matter what I do, I'm going to be in a situation where at least one box contains two or more objects. It's impossible to put more objects than there are boxes in such a way that you can avoid that. So there must be double, double stacking going on, at the very least double stacking in one box. This is also called the cubbyhole principle or the pigeonhole principle because if you have home pigeons, uh, they live in cubbyholes. And the idea is if I have more pigeons than there are cubbyholes for them, no matter how the pigeons arrange themselves in these cubbyholes, if there are more pigeons than holes, at least one box is contained two or more pigeons, the, the pigeonhole principle. Now this principle is very, very powerful. And to express its power, I'm going to actually uh, rephrase this in a different way. And I wrote this in beforehand in my terrible handwriting. Here's another way to say the pigeonhole principle. I'm going to do it in terms of labels. Suppose there are more than n objects that are each to be assigned a label, and there's only n labels. So you've got more objects than there are labels. Well, then obviously, whatever you do, there's sure to be at least two objects with the same label. This has some wonderful, amusing consequences. I'm going to label the people of New York City. And I'm going to give each person a label, and that label's going to be a number, which is going to be the number of hairs on his or her head. Now, I happen to know that the human head has at most 150,000 hairs or something like that. So the possible labels a person could have in New York City is zero for no hairs on the head, one, two, all the way to, say, about 150,000. So these are the possible labels. But I happen to know there's more people in New York City than 150,000 people. So by this pigeonhole principle, since there are more people given these labels, two people must be given, at least, at least two people must be given the same label. That is, there exist two people in New York City with exactly the same number of hairs on their heads. Now, this is the delightful thing about mathematics. I proved they exist, but I've given you absolutely no indication how to find these people. That's not a mathematician's problem. Mathematicians just like to prove things are there to be found. All right. So, I have a whole host of ways to think about the pigeonhole principle in chapter 20 of this Thinking Mathematics series. So, it's, that book is available, volume 2, on the website. But I want to just get to one that solves a puzzle I put out there. And the puzzle is the following. Do, 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 do. And when I say out there, I mean on various uh, forums and so forth. Here are the powers of 3. 1, 3, 9, 27, 81, 243... Uh, 729, and so on. And I want to know, do any of these powers of 3 ever end in 0, 1? So I want to know, do they end in 0, 1? And I can actually use the pigeonhole principle to solve this. And I'm going to do it. Here goes. I'm going to assign each number in this infinite list a label. And the label is going to be its remainder upon division by 100. So I'm going to divide each of these by 100. So for example, 243 upon division by 100 leaves the remainder of 43. So I'll label that 43. 729 leaves the remainder of 29. 27 leaves the remainder of 27. So if I do this for my infinite list, well, if I'm divided by 100, there's only these possible remainders. Only, uh, I've got the label, excuse me, from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 99. So I only have 100 possible labels for an infinite set of numbers. So that means there's going to be two powers of 3 with exactly the same label. That is, there's going to be a power of 3, 3 to the a, that has some label k, and that means it's remained upon div divided by 100 is k, so it must be some multiple of 100 plus k. And there's going to be another one, such that it has the same remainder upon division by 100. So it's also a remainder of k. So that means I've established, established by the pigeonhole principle that exists two powers of 3, that leave the same remainder upon division by 100. If I subtract them, uh, let's change colored pen now, let's do it in lime green for fun. That means 3 to the a minus 3 to the b will be, k's will cancel, some multiple of 100. All right. Uh, let's just assume that I've arranged these so that the first power of 3 is the bigger one and 3 to the b is the second one. So I can pull out a common factor of 3 to the b. So at least 3 to the b and 3 to the a minus b minus 1 is 100 times r. Let me play with that equation. Now that means the left-hand side is a multiple of 100. It's 100 times something. So 100 goes into the left-hand side somehow. 
Well, I'm going to use uh, the properties of primes here, knowing that hundreds are made of twos and fives. There's no way that any part of 100 is used in, the, in this first part, 3 to the b. So that means 100 is going into all the second part, 3 to the a minus b minus 1. So give myself a bit more space, da, 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 get rid of this. That tells me that, uh, whoops, pen please, and I don't like lime green, I'll go over to blue. That that means that this part, 3 to the a minus b minus 1, is the part with 100 in it. So that 2 must be 100 times something. Uh, let's call it t. Well, let's add 1 to both sides. So that means this power of 3 is of the form 100t plus 1. Well, any multiple of 100 ends in 0, 0. And I add 1, it means this guy is ending in 0, 1. So yes, there does exist a power of 3 that ends in 0, 1. In fact, there's nothing special about 100 in this puzzle. I could have done it at 1,000 and find that there must exist a power of 3 that ends in triple zero, zero, 001. Or I could have done a million. There must be a power of 3 that ends in zero, 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 0001, and so on. There's the sneaky use of the pigeonhole principle. All right, I think I'm running out of time. I've only got a few minutes. Um, let me just end off with just a, a cute little puzzle. Um, I'm wondering, in your local library, must there be two books with the same number of pages in it? How could you use the pigeonhole principle to think about that? Must there be two books in your local library with exactly the same number of pages? All right, thanks very much.